Hi everyone, this is actually Luke from Night 2 speaking to you right now, so spoiler alert, this does turn into a bit of a multi-nighter, but before the video gets started, I basically just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody who's been watching, liking, commenting and subscribing to this channel. Um, as of right now, I'm at 184 subscribers uh, and I only really started uploading to this channel a month ago, so <laughs> it's just blowing my mind basically the amount of support that you're all showing and uh, it really does mean the world to me so thank you all so much I'd just like to quickly add that um, I'm sorry I look so tired on night one um, I hadn't rested properly but I certainly feel a lot better now <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for joining me My name's Luke and welcome to my YouTube channel it's currently 20 past 5 on the 25th of February uh, and tonight and tomorrow a forecast to be clear skies uh, and while that's a good thing it also as it often does is coinciding with full moon I often find uh, around this time of every lunar cycle and I suppose many of you will too um, that my enthusiasm to get outside uh, and try is kind of at its lowest um, for many of you, you'll already know why this is, but for those of you who don't know why uh, a full moon is generally bad news for an astrophotographer, I'll do my best to just quickly explain. So, the moon itself, of course, is giving off no light at all. It's just reflected sunlight. Uh, but the effect that that sunlight has, as it reflects off the moon and makes its way towards air on Earth, uh, is that it illuminates the entire atmosphere quite brightly. Um, I suppose any of you lucky enough to live somewhere where you could usually see the Milky Way around a new moon, you'll probably notice that it goes away every time it's a full moon. Basically, the effect that this has uh, on astronomy and astronomical observations uh, is that the already faint objects that many of us like to look at and photograph become all of a sudden far fainter. Um, obviously, the, the object brightness hasn't changed at all, but the background sky by which you detect any contrast uh, has of course gotten a lot brighter and it washes out what you're trying to view. Now, of course, that's not to say it's doom and gloom every single time it's a full moon. Um, many of you will know that, you know, with mono cameras uh, and narrowband filters, you can cut out most of the moonlight, at least in hydrogen and sulfur. Oxygen lets some through. Um, and for me, in my case, uh, with a one shot color camera, and dual narrowband filtration um, that also does kind of the same thing now these filters in basically all the forms do work extremely well um, of course as I explained in a previous video or you may already know uh, the effect that they do have is that they cut out nearly all light pollution uh, and just deliver to you the bit of light that you actually want to see and record uh, that's being emitted by the deep space object while that's fine for most emission nebulae targets uh, it's not so great if you want to shoot reflection nebulae or indeed a broadband target like a galaxy. For tonight's experiment though, uh, I'd actually like to shoot with no filtration at all and kind of take it back to basics, uh, kind of how I started out this hobby. I think to make the experiment worth trying though, uh, I'm going to have to stack the deck it's at least slightly in my favour uh, and I'll do that by target selection. And what I mean by that is basically I'm going to select a target that's far enough away from the moon that it'll be less affected by that moonlight and also something that's initially very bright to begin with so it's already got a head start on the contrast against the background sky. So tonight I'm going to start out by shooting M42, the Orion Nebula uh, and then once that's set around about 11pm I think uh, I'm then going to move on to a galaxy target uh, and I've chosen M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. And now all that's left to do is wait for it to get dark. Well, Orion's in a viewable position now. Uh, the sun's only just gone down, but I think I'm gonna need every single minute I can really. So uh, I can always discard these frames later if they're no good. Uh, I'm gonna get set up and make a start. So 
So we're now on about 7.40 p.m. Uh, the temperature's dropped to five and a half degrees. I've got the scope. I don't know if you can just hear, but it's just finished its first exposure. I've got it taking two minute exposures tonight rather than the usual five minutes because um, I think five minutes is going to extremely overexpose the car. I'll just take a look at one of these in a moment and see if that's still the case. I don't mind a little bit. I'm, I'm not trying for an A pod or something. Um, just a nice image. So we're currently on 10 past 10 and I've just slewed away to M51 to start image capture on that target for the night now. Unfortunately capture on Orion didn't go very smoothly at all. Um, I've ended up with about an hour and 20 minutes of exposures I think. Basically I, I went to refocus and I had quite a lot of trouble getting repeatable results from uh, the autofocus aid. So uh, instead of spent probably the best part of an hour and a half I'd say. Uh, troubleshooting that particular pro, uh, program. Hopefully capture on M51 goes a bit smoother. <laughs> well, it's 1.30 a.m. now and I thought I'd give you a quick update. Um, the temperature's dropped right down, it's now just above a degree. Um, all the auto-focusing I've been doing has been moving perfectly now, so I, uh, I can only assume there were a bit of a isolated case um, was uh, the earlier troubles I had. Everything's, everything's moving along nice, uh, as nice as you could hope for at this point. Um, it's kind of hard to stay awake, I'm, I'm on a really tired day, but I guess uh, these are just the things you have to get used to dealing with as an astronomer. Um, yeah, fingers crossed uh, we end up with something reasonable for all this freezing cold and crap looking data capture. <laughs> Well, it's around 10 past three now. Um, the temperature's come up a little bit from earlier on where it was around a degree. Uh, it's now 2.2, so practically ready for summer clothing. Um, <laughs> I feel like um, I've perhaps gained back a little bit of energy uh, and sort of a second wind after becoming really tired earlier, which is uh, nice because, I mean, the, the nights really just drag uh, when you get too tired. but. I suppose that's part of what this experiment's all about. Is it worth the pain of uh, forcing yourself to stay awake on a, on a night like this? Um, the scope's about to do a meridian flip, perhaps in 10 more minutes or so. Uh, you can always tell when it's getting ready to do that, for anybody who didn't know, by uh, the fact that the counterweight bar is uh, almost parallel with the ground. And uh, yeah, the subs are coming in smoothly. Uh, no complaints, it seems like all earlier problems uh, with autofocus are now resolved, uh, totally smooth, and uh, yeah, no complaints, just a bit tired. <laughs> Well, 
We're on half past six on night two, uh, the 26th of February. After kind of a shaky start to weather for the day, uh, I didn't really think it was going to clear. Um, the forecast held true, it has. Um, should be a nice time lapse, hopefully, I can show to, uh, to show you that. But um, yeah, this moon it just looks so large when it's uh, quite close to the horizon. I know it's just an optical illusion, but yeah, it certainly looks pretty exceptionally huge tonight. Um, but yeah, the scope's out and cooling. Unfortunately, I forgot to record uh, that being carried out, but I'm definitely not going to carry it back in just to carry it back out. It's uh, <laughs> pretty heavy. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I've just got a, another time lapse running. Uh, and yeah, just waiting for things to get really dark and uh, settle down. Stay tuned. Well, we just hit 7 p.m. Uh, I've just got everything finished, up and running, all out of focus, plate solved and aligned on M42 again, um, using the same custom field of view as I'd set yesterday. Um, I think one top tip, if I could give you one, uh, would be definitely don't leave it till the last minute to set your uh, your PC up, and uh, <laughs> especially not after a reboot. If you've got a quite slow imaging laptop like me, as that took about 20 minutes to get ready to uh, allow me to connect uh, my software and such which yeah uh, I'm just glad it wasn't actually dark while I was waiting for that to happen that would have been a major uh, a major sadness. So I've just been taking another look at the uh, the subs that's coming in tonight, uh, as they're so much better looking than uh, than last night's. And I think I may have just made a bit of an embarrassing discovery, uh, and that's that I reckon every sub that I took last night was actually accidentally recorded with a gain of 300 rather than 100 like tonight. Um, I do believe I've found the reason why this is though, and it's because I'm not using the ASCOM driver, I'm actually using the native driver for astrophotography tool for my camera. Um, and the live view had actually been set to 300 gain, and in my imaging plan, um, you have the option to actually manually specify a gain, or just leave it blank, and it'll use whatever's currently set. And uh, yeah, last night's, uh, I do believe it all actually been recorded with 300 gain by accident. Oops. So just to try and illustrate the extent of my daftness, um, here's a sub from last night. As you can see, an unstretched histogram preview showing you. And in a few seconds, we're gonna have a, a sub uh, exposure of the same length from tonight, but at what I think is a much lower gain, uh, just about to come in in six seconds. Get ready. Now, that's quite a bit more dynamic range that's free in car there. <laughs> oh well. Hey everyone, uh, we're just coming up to my last few minutes now of data capture on M42. Um, I don't really think I can go any longer now as it's just about to go into the neighbour's roof. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what I can actually get out of this data now. Um, and hopefully the little bit of an error that I'd made, a little bit, um, won't matter too much in the end. And uh, I should be able to successfully still make a decent image. But um, if not, then I'll just pick whichever data set, data set was best uh, and process that. But yeah, I'm sure it'd be salvageable at least. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm ready to get moved on now to M51 capture for the night and uh, Hopefully that goes as smooth as it did last night. Neither, neither of those data sets were clipped, so they should um, They should combine quite well Anyway, stay tuned Well, 
Well, we're on 2.30 a.m. now, so I thought I'd give you a quick update. Um, I've just gone through stacking the M42 data and giving it a, a mostly complete process now. Just a few touch-ups I'd like to do before saving it. Um, that's turned out far better than I could have expected, really. Um, I have taken data, obviously, on full moon nights before, but never really gave it too much effort because I always expected that the end result wouldn't really have been worth the effort, but in this case, uh, I think it's been a bit of an eye-opener, really. It's, I mean, yeah, the data isn't quite as good as it would have been uh, on a new moon night, but at least it just shows me, um, and hopefully you at home, that it is worth still coming out and trying uh, on a night like tonight. Well, it's 5am and that's the end of image capture for me on night two. In total, I ended up capturing more than 300 two-minute exposures on M51 at least. Um, M42, I've finished processing and that turned out great. I'll be happy to show you the result of that in a moment. And uh, yeah, as long as my PC doesn't catch fire while uh, trying to process all those frames, uh, I should be able to turn this video hopefully into something resembling a cohesive experience uh, but I'll let you be the judge of that one and uh, yeah as always thank you very much if you stayed and watched uh, I really appreciate your time cheers